Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the mach -E vlog. Today we are in a Model Y, and the purpose of this video is I'm gonna take a little bit of a review of autopilot. Ooh, so let's go. So, we have a Model Y for a few days. Our mach -E got a, a ding in the parking lot, so it's being repaired. It's actually gonna be ready tomorrow. Uh, so one of the things that we did is we took a road trip to Las Vegas in the Model Y, and it was a good opportunity for us to experience autopilot and see how it performs compared to our Blue Cruise. It performs very, very well, like what you would expect had some you know very good experiences with it made the drive up here yesterday excellent nice and easy handles curves uh really well um it it pretty smooth uh, of course the adjustments for like traffic like this it does a great job so in a lot of ways it is very comparable and a lot of people um, don't believe me when I say Blue Cruise is very similar to Autopilot. Got to remember we're comparing like Blue Cruise to basic Autopilot. Um, there is Enhanced Autopilot, which uh, will do like navigate on Autopilot and uh, lane changes. And then of course there's FSD Beta. We have a video where we did a first drive in FSD Beta. It was our first time ever experiencing it. And that was like a, like a quick 10 minute thing. This was... It's been nice because we've had it for several days. So we've got to try it like at night uh, in a little bit more traffic. And of course on the, the, the long stretches here. Now there are some uh, things that I do want to point out, but we're going to have to stop for a second because we're going through the California inspection station. So I'm going to take it off of auto, autopilot. We're going to pause while we go through this and then I'll pick it back up again. Okay, we made it through the inspection point. Let me turn uh, autopilot back on. Whoops. That's one of the little things that bugs me about it. And Blue Cruise used to do that. And autopilot still does that. So I turned it on. I wasn't exactly centered in the lane. And it does a quick correction to make sure I'm centered in the lane. Which is sort of good, but it's sort of uncomfortable for me and the passenger and speaking of the passenger your passenger would like to say to please hit record on your mic okay i'll hit record <laughs> on my mic there we go and uh we'll set the speed limit to just five over don't want to break the law too much uh now you see these grooves in the road this is another difference in autopilot versus blue cruise so like with uh blue cruise i can say like whoops oh. i tried to demo i could slightly steer around that and it's a cooperative system so it would let me adjust slightly and then when I let go of the steering wheel it would put me back in the center of the lane gently uh, with autopilot you could see like that got me out of autopilot because I tried to like get around some of those little pothole like groove things to make it a smoother ride for me uh, and as soon as I gave it a little bit too much torque on the steering wheel, it threw me out. And it's sort of like you're, you're riding in some ruts and uh, give it a little bit too much torque and it throws you out. The other thing that is a big difference between Blue Cruise and Autopilot and the way, like I prefer the Blue Cruise way, is that uh, let me go up here and try to do a lane change. Actually, eh, let me get around this car. I don't want to get slowed down by him. So I'm gonna speed up a little bit and then do a lane change. And I like the way that Blue Cruise does uh, lane changes a lot better than Autopilot. Now they're speeding up and this guy's slowing down. Mm -hmm. People aren't cooperating. Um, so if I put my blinker on, gosh, now they're both slowing down. Let me just get a around both of these people are knowing and they know we're filming so they're mm -hmm. <laughs> they're being a pain so if i put my blinker on it gets me out of blue crew of uh, autopilot my blinker turns off automatically first of all i want to say that's cool 
it turns the blinker off automatically. I like that. Uh, but to re-engage, I have to do that again. And traffic is just being one of these. We're climbing up a, a mountain, so like these trucks are going really slow and whatnot. Um, so again, if I have autopilot on, I keep doing not enough. So I turn autopilot on, let me turn my blinker on. It's on. It's not me, it's not taking me out of autopilot. There we go. I don't know what that is. It hasn't done that before, but now I'm out of autopilot. I switch lanes and now it won't re-engage until I do the double thing on the, the stalk again. Whoa, why are we slowing down? And that was a phantom braking. Not hugely significant. We slowed from 75 down to 69. On the way up, we got a rattle here somewhere. On the way up, every single truck that we were passing, uh, it's doing it again. So oh. we we're doing 75. Now we're doing 63, 62, 61. And now it decides to speed back up. I thought it was the shadows when we yeah. were coming here on the way up the truck shadows were going halfway into the lane because the sun was coming from there so this doesn't make any sense and he's um, yeah i was going to see if it did it again oh no oh. oh. was that that was far? it yeah oh. i swear like i'm not trying to make autopilot look bad i was i've been very happy with it uh but some of these quirks are quirky. are interesting quirky um i sort of a kudos to autopilot but bad on me on the way up here um i was going through barstow i had my hand on the steering wheel but i didn't give it enough torque uh and i have to compliment it it like put me in autopilot jail because it gave me the warning here up oh, we're slowing down again nobody's behind me so i'm just letting it do it so we went from 75 down to 64 and now we're going into the sun which is very hard for uh, these ADAS systems, I can barely see. Uh, in fact, I'm a, I don't know. Now we're slowing down because there's a car ahead of us that I can see. I'm all over the place in this review so far. Everybody's going really slow. Let me get around this. My apologies. I didn't, I, you know, we just decided to record because we had uh, a few moments, but this is like very challenging. Oh, and it says autopilot speed limited due to poor visibility. And I think that's fair. Like, that's understandable. Uh, I as a human, it. I sh want to be going this slow. So another good point here. Um, oh, I know what I was saying. It didn't detect enough input from me on the steering wheel and I didn't notice the warnings so it disabled autopilot like by the time i reacted it was like you're in autopilot jail which didn't say that but it just said autopilot disabled for the rest of the drive so good to see those safety features in there um on the you know negative side there's a camera up here that's uh right above the rear view mirror that's supposedly monitoring what drivers are doing or so i've been told so i've read about so my friends have told me about that have teslas but I literally just went like this and like covered it and my hand got tired and I never got any type of warning on the screen that the camera view has been blocked. If I do that on the uh, Mach-E or actually any other system, like if I block the cameras, it tells me within like 10 seconds. So we're going to change lanes. I'll put autopilot back on. And the fact that I have to reactivate every time I do a lane change, that's fixed if I would choose to buy enhanced autopilot, or you would. Um, but I'm not going to, because it's a rental car. <laughs> but uh, the truck needs to move over because their lane is merging. But I, I don't like that. I, I like the, the blue cruise method of re-engaging automatically. Like I initiated a lane change. As soon as it sees a new lane, it re-engages. And now this lane is really wide. So you can see it's centering me pretty far over to the right. And then now as the lane gets narrow, it's putting me back in. 
So you're just sort of getting like a real time view of like how autopilot handles. This is actually very tough conditions with the the sun getting in the eyes of the cameras and then disappearing. Now we're in the, the shadows. But, um, you know, so I'm putting it in some tough conditions right now. But overall, I really like it. Just like I like the ones from Lexus and uh, Chevy and whoever. I'm just going to stay in this lane for a while and, and talk, keep it a little bit simpler. Um, it handled stop and go traffic very, very well. Like it was very smooth in seeing that traffic was coming to a stop. Uh, it's still, you know, there was one time when I could see everybody was at a stop and I chose to hit the brakes. And I, I still haven't found a, a an ADAS system that does really well with like completely stop traffic ahead of you. Um, adjusting to my comfort level. It'll break and I know it's gonna break, but I'd rather gradually break. And it's, you know, not me distrusting the system per se, it's me distrusting the guy behind me because if I wait till it sees the traffic and does like a hard break, I gotta rely on the guy behind me or gal, person. Uh, the person breaking quickly as well. And you know, there's, there's times when I look up, to be honest, and I'll see like a Tesla behind me and I'm like, okay, the, I know they're not gonna run into me. Then there's other times I look back and it's like a 2005 Chevy van. And I'm like, which is what hit us in our uh, first Mach-E on a hit and run. And I'm like, eh, I don't trust them. Let me gradually slow down. Otherwise, you know, like I said, it, it makes these long stretches here. Like we're pretty much got like a straight stretch for miles makes it nice and easy, uh, keeps us dead center, feels uh, very stable, not bobbling around too much. There was a couple of times where we thought it was like struggling a little bit, but I think it was more of the pavement making the car feel uneven, no fault of autopilot. So, you know, we've not only looked at Blue Cruise, which we've driven for, you know, over a year. Um, we've tried 1.0, 1.2 and 1.3 versions of Blue Cruise. Uh, but we've also tried Super Cruise, uh, Lexus, like these other systems. They're all pretty darn excellent for this type of scenario and situation. Last night we were able to play around and, and test autopilot like driving the city streets of Las Vegas. It did pretty well with that as well. I don't know why you know people wanted to use that unless you have like FSD beta. double click the, the, the turn signal getting flustered here trying to talk and, and drive at the same time um, but you know if you have FSD beta you know city streets might be something that you want to use uh, that system on but with just autopilot or just blue cruise or just super cruise I don't find it that useful for using on city streets but I tried it out and it does a great job uh, it won't stop it stop lights it'll stop if somebody stopped in front of me just like blue cruise will um, the only thing that i thought was interesting is like this one street i was like i know blue cruise would cancel on me because the line markings were disappearing there was just bad pavement and everything it's like ah, I, there's no way blue cruise would handle this and i was impressed because autopilot was handling it until at one point it decided to sort of just like veer toward the curve because I think it thought it saw like a lane over there. Um, so it was like great that it was handling it and not giving up, but it should have gave up because it ended up making a bad decision. But overall, you know, I keep saying that, uh, it's been a great system to have. There we go. Um, you really have to make sure that your blinker is on before you do these lane changes or you have that issue that I did earlier where it turned the, the blinker off um, and made my uh, lane change rough. But that was just me being, you know, flustered with recording video and driving. Um, I, I recommend if you have autopilot, give some of these other systems a try. If you have Blue Cruise, try to give autopilot a try. If you are used to no system, give it a try. Like uh, Blue Cruise, Autopilot, Super Cruise, I think they can do a lot to help uh, 
safety, help make your drive less stressful, as long as you use it correctly. And by use it correctly, it's doing like what we're doing now is like, even though there's a there's two cameras recording me, I'm not looking at the camera significantly. I'm keeping my eyes on the road, especially now when visibility is, is a bit rough. I'm keeping my hands on the steering wheel. Uh, I know I've seen a lot of people and I have friends that they have uh, autopilot and they'll talk and talk and then they wiggle the steering wheel or wiggle or you know adjust the speed. I prefer to just rest my hand on it and uh, that way I'm like really ready in case something does pop up and I need to take over. I, it reminds me of the old saying from the 80s, uh, President Reagan would say, trust but verify. It, it's sort of like that's the way I deal with all of these ADAS systems is like I trust them but I verify by being an active participant in driving the car. None of them are fully autonomous even on a stretch of road like this where the car is handling it pretty well. We wiggled over a little bit there because again, the lane got wider, but um, it's still my responsibility to, to watch out and make sure, you know, who knows, there could be a truck tire in the road that the car doesn't see, especially in conditions like this or just whatever, you know, we, we have to expect the unexpected and be prepared. But I'm really happy with autopilot uh, for the re some of the reasons I mentioned before, I prefer uh, Blue Cruise. Mostly it's down to the lane changes. I don't like the noise that this makes engaging and disengaging and the fact that I got to reach for it and do it a couple of times, you know, every time I'm doing a lane change. Again, that's rectified if you spend the extra money for uh, enhanced autopilot or FSD beta. Um, but I do, I do prefer Blue Cruise. It's very smooth. It's getting better. The version 1.3 with lane changes, in-lane repositioning and slowing for curves has made it a excellent, excellent system. It's rolling out now to people that have 1.0 uh, and 1.2. So there's a lot of great things. Oh, see, I, I had my hand on the steering wheel and it said apply torque. So it's doing a good job of monitoring, making sure that I'm actively participating. And now let's go past this guy, but I think I'll wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching this video. I have input. Oh, we see, <laughs> I don't remember. I have input and also I have questions. Patrick, yes. why is there a rainbow on the screen? That's like a option that you can enable. And this is a Hertz rental and they had it enabled like this when we got it. I think it's a fun option and um, it's, it's great to see, look, come on, take, take me out of, it won't take me out of autopilot. There, I tap the brake. People behind me think I'm crazy. I don't know what it's doing. Like, is, if you know, let me know. Am I doing something wrong? I'm like, you turn your blinker on, it's supposed to let me do a lane change. I don't, I don't get it. So next question. Well, no. So how do you initiate rainbow mode? I don't rainbow know. Rainbow road mode. I think it's like seven taps or something. I think it's extra taps. Yeah. Telling charge positive told us and. Somebody uh, will answer in the comments. How do you enable rainbow mode? I'm, I'm like, I'm happy that it's on. Oh yeah. I think it's super fun. And apparently there was like some kind of Easter egg that you do that. And then it plays uh, David Bowie or something like that. Um, I think Easter eggs are fun. Me too. So I think normally when you're in autopilot, it's just blue lines, right? Yeah, it's just blue lines. And they're the little blue steering wheel up here as well. But the rainbow road makes it like very clear and obvious. You know, I'm coming from a mach -E, so I like having uh, blue cruise displayed on my driver's screen. There's not one here. So uh, that helps with the visuals quite a bit more. So I, 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 I like the rainbow road. It's a good sign. Do you guys like the rainbow road? Uh, if you have a Tesla, do you like it? And if you don't have a Tesla, do you like the rainbow road? And if you do, leave a rainbow emoji <laughs> in the comments. Uh, okay, my second, I'm not saying question, input. As the passenger, I notice the jerkiness more when you get in and out of the uh, autopilot. So with Blue Cruise and with Super Cruise and with the Lexus, it 
has been more of a seamless experience when you get out and you change lanes. Obviously with Blue Cruise it's collaborative and you change lanes and it stays in the system and re-engages. So for me as a passenger, when I've been filming or like sitting on my phone messing around, when you change lanes, you sometimes give it a tug. Um, like if it's fussing with you or not um, cooperating. So I get shaken, like I'm looking at my phone and suddenly there's like a, uh, uh, you know, and it, it bugs me. <laughs> and a lot of that is when it's reactivating, I think. Is it? And then it like centers you? Yeah, because it's like, if I don't get exactly centered, and I, I would probably do a better job of that, but I'm just so used to with Blue Cruise, even if I initially uh, activate it and it's just a tap of the button and I'm over all the way on the left, it just glides me over to where I should should be. Um, the initial, like when I first got Blue Cruise, it would do that where it would just be, oh, where are we gonna go? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the lane split and that's a hard. Uh, so that wasn't you demonstrating, that was the car? Yeah, that was the oh, car. Okay, that was weird. Uh, yeah, there's like a little more of this unpredictability like, you know, when you're just sitting on your phone and the driver's driving and you're messing around on your phone, whatever it is, like there's just a little more stuff happening that I'm not expecting. Uh, and it's not just an unfamiliarity thing. It's like, why is the car veering or why is it jerking? And that's, oh, we're slowing down. No, like that. Slow down. No, there's people behind me. Oh, it changed speed limits on me. Oh. I don't know, but it changed it to 71. I don't. Oh. Um, so that's, that goes back to, uh, because the Mach-E is a cooperative system, like when we're coming up to something like that, I might put my hand on the steering wheel because I know it's gonna be, a, it, it may get confused. And if it starts to go too far to the right, my hand will just guide it to the correct way. Uh, with autopilot, I can't do that. I can't guide it I can't correct it. If it's going too far to the right, the only way I can do it is to like pop it out of autopilot one way or the other. So that's where we've had some of those issues as well. Mm. And, you know, for our test purposes too, like this weekend is like, I sort of let it do things that I wouldn't necessarily want to let it do. Like seeing that the lane is opening up, I would probably just go like, oh, let me go ahead and just cancel that for, you know, 20 seconds and then I'll re reactivate it. But like this case, we're recording a video where we want to see what it's going to do. And it sort of like split both lanes and then yelled at me for whatever reason. Well, that's all I have for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I may not have hit all of my points. Uh, if you have questions uh, about autopilot, I'm sure you can drop them here and I probably can't answer them, but I'm sure the other people will. Um, we got to turn this thing back in tomorrow. So we're going to do that and, um, hopefully get other opportunities to try out autopilot and FSD beta. Again, we have a friend that offered to instead of let us drive it, he would drive it and sort of talk, talk us through some of the features and, um, issues that it does have. But, uh, thank you to our patrons for supporting us at the two, four and $6 level. They're the whisper engaged and unbridled versions of our patron members. And we very much appreciate their membership. Some have been with us for over two years, which is amazing support. It, is it or a year and a half? A uh, year and a half, something like okay. that. You guys a tell us time. a long time. Uh, and you know, of course, always thank you for watching the videos. Give it a thumbs up. If you think that I'm completely wrong, give it a thumbs up and make a comment. Don't give it a thumbs down unless you really want to. But uh, they can. <laughs> anyways, I'll let you do the close out because I'll mess it up. Just remember that whatever you drive, whether it has a rainbow road or not. Oh, one final detail. Yes. And this is going to make the video whatever. <laughs> but I so on the Mach-E, like to adjust the speed, it's like a up down click. This has the scroll wheel. I You know, it's like I like this one and I like the Mach-E. So it's like I can. I, I sort of like that there's like a little click, click, click to uh, raise the speed and I can hold it to go by like five mile per hour increments. 
but I like this one that it's like just a scroll wheel like you would have on like a mouse. So just, I like them both. I'm not going to say one's better than the other because I really do like both of those, but little, little details like that. And so just remember <laughs> that whatever you drive, whether it has a scrolly wheelie and a rainbow or not, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye.